Minions have spawned. For everyone struggling with the Zed mid lane matchup, we have here a solution. Well, this is a little bit further, actually, if you're struggling with any of those melee matchups like the Akali, like the Katarina. If you hate playing those, Fizz, you know, all of these, Faker has got the solution for you. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you a Renekton game here on the Korean server. He's facing off against a Zed in the mid lane, and he is going to be playing with a Echo in the jungle, kind of balancing out that AP need, which is something that you need to keep in mind. You know, whenever we want to pick something like the Rennington is obviously the fact that we don't really want to be full AP, especially since Rennington don't do so hot if there is a lot of resistances built against him. So, ladies and gentlemen, what do we have? We have in the top lane, the Rengar King. We have seen this guy before on the channel and it was a pretty hype video. So, if you want to go on for that, bookmark it for yourself and hit it up right after this. But so far, in the top lane, seems like Rengar King is winning once again. Ooh, decent trade here by Hydon Bush. And then he's facing off against Sephiora. In the jungle, there is an Italy, which is important for this matchup. Then we have Zeri and Yumi in the bot lane for Faker. And Lucian and Nami in the bot lane for Zed. Alright, so Faker in a little bit of, no of an uncomfortable situation here. Um, generally... His matchup is so dominant that it doesn't really matter, but he must have miscontrolled the wave just a slight little bit. Takes the one-for-one one trade. Beautiful slice and dice out there. And Echo doesn't quite get the stun, but that was a beautiful play by Faker. Super good. Super good execution there as he connects with the ZZ. Saw an opening there, but... This is exactly how ridiculously strong this champion is against Zed. Zed just doesn't stand a chance. And here, very interesting by the way, Rennington, aka Faker, decides to go for Lucidity Boots and a Longsword in the recall. Alright, let's go over what happened in that lane earlier. So, the ooh, gang coming in, yeah, the stun is not going to be hitting unfortunately but really good trade still and this is going to be canon exp missed by the zed uh, gotta be a little bit careful here but the thing is this right so what happened in the lane before is that faker was slow pushing in the wave obviously he got the level two and then he was dominant enough that he would uh, push in the lane further and then the lane kind of got stuck which is unfortunate but it is something that happens quite a bit you can see the trades that he can take here it is something that happens quite a bit nonetheless for melee matchups right it's a little bit harder to control the wave that way um and obviously one thing that you want to do with the Rennington matchup is you want to you want to spend more time um, away from the turret because that is where Zed has to overexpose himself to you and where you can get those trades on that are just so ridiculously dominant. Right, we have a slice and dice. The empowered Q comes out and that is really, really strong at clearing the wave. As you can see, right? So we'll see Faker clear the wave here and probably take down a plate as he is not in no rush to recall here. Um, unlike Zed, who had, yeah, who had recalled, now has two long swords, And you can see how cocky the trades are here for Faker, right? Ooh, really good play by Zed. Faker's W didn't connect and now Rennington Ultimate is gone, which is a really, really big disadvantage here. Yeah, they're not going to get Faker, let's be honest. But this is still a this is still a decent situation for him. Alright. So Zed Wing out again. Playing this very safe. He knows that Rennington Ult isn't available, so you see him play much more much more aggressive the Zed. And as you can see, the trades are so stupid that you know 
it is still a very one-sided trade. Hmm. Unfortunate, Echo is dead. And Zed will just probably be able to shadow out here. Oh, Zed said. Right. Good job. Yeah, it's it's really hard for Zed to deal with Renning, as you can see here. Um, his his pretty much his play is to just sit back. Level seven. And Faker turns around, knowing that he would be attacked by a bunch of minions. A right, beautiful outplay, mini outplay of the W there. But Fiora definitely has her opening here. And this is not like a Z player. She knows the Renning matchup probably pretty intricately. Alright, ultimate comes out. Faker will take down Fiora. This not nearly as dominant of a matchup. So very, very well played by Faker. They're surprising her with the ultimate coming out. Something that she probably wasn't expecting to uh, be available at that point in time. And Faker will be slicing and dicing over the backline minions with a Q that clears it out. And then he procs the plate and recalls. Three and zero with a freaking Prowler's Claw to boot, but now he has been sent to the side lane by the rotations that are happening here. I expect this to change, but we will see what exactly is going to happen because obviously Rengar, I don't think Rengar is very interested in staying in the mid lane. Oh, bad W by Faker, gets all played by the Fiora, probably going to be taken down here. Ooh. Oh my god, not even close, dude. What a beautiful play. He misses the W, gets stunned, and he still doesn't die. No ultimates used by both of them. I mean, Fiora did use it, but it didn't really proc, right? So... Yeah, and this is just the item advantage, I suppose. Rennington is pretty strong in those extended trades. If he can, like, rebuild his Fury there, right? Which is exactly what happened. And now, I think that was an ultimate by the Zed, and Zed will be taken down here, yeah. Nowhere to run. Hiding Bush is unstoppable. Five and O. Oh. Alright, so red buff is available here. I'm sure, yeah, I'm sure he's going to want to proc that at least once. Trade with it a little bit, as that will give him... A heck a lot of dominance. Gotta be very careful with your W here. Oh, he wanted to bait out. So this is interesting. He wanted to bait out the Fiora W, but she didn't even W, so he instant... He just W'd her when he was inside of her, so she doesn't really have the ability to react W that. She could have still, but she didn't. And then... The Ignite comes out, leaving her under turret with Echo able to pick that kill up. So that is beautiful play by Faker. Very well done. Shows that if Faker was to roll swap to top lane, he would still probably be one of the better players. But of course... At this point, you know, let's be let's be real with ourselves. This mechanic's definitely not the same as uh, some of those young players. You know, the Jace, the Holy Grave, beautiful W, and that is Echo being stunned there. And yeah, you can just tell you can just tell how ridiculously strong this matchup is. If Renekton gets ahead. And he has like an AP jungler to pair. He is ridiculously strong. Be it an Evelyn, be it a be it a be it an Echo. It doesn't really matter. He's just he's just so ridiculously strong with those champions. Alright. 
managed to get the stun on Kutsufiora again. Echo will ult out. And this is two turrets taken down now. And it doesn't matter. Like, Lucian and Nami are kind of winning their lanes at this current point in time. But it just... At this point, I don't think it'll matter much because Rennington, Rengar, and Echo are so ridiculously strong that this is going to be very, very difficult for Lucian to deal with. All right, we are moving into the side lane here, giving over the mid lane to Zeri, which is the classical move. This happens usually once the tier 1 turret of bot lane is gone. On either side, doesn't really matter. Um, that, that is usually what happens. As uh, in mid lane, bot lane not only is a little bit safer, but also the fights usually revolve still around the center of the map. And you kind of want your bot lane around mid lane, you want your, uh, around mid game, you want your bot lane um, somewhere around the mid lane as always so you can or always so you can get ooh, we missed the plating here uh, so you can have influence get five people onto every job as long as obviously the side laning mid laner is doing a good job uh, he can still be at the fights So, Fiora is... I, I'm expecting Fiora to instant W now. Just because Faker has two times now instantly W'd her. This is kind of interesting as obviously in Fiora. Fiora, with a matchup like Rennington, if she plays versus him in lane, she has much more data. She has much more information on how he uses his Ws and so has a lot more chances to parry than she has right now with Ren just randomly showing up and uh, you know yeah okay, beautifully done Baker just waits for that W and takes her down and absolutely skilled it a matchup and also champion diffs you know, the matchup versus them. He's now picking up a GA and an Umbral Glaive he has. In addition to the Prowler's Claw, the Umbral Glaive, I don't need to explain to you, and the GA is ridiculously strong, as he is obviously always going to be diving in and trying to create some shenanigans, and he doesn't want to give up that 700 Gs, which makes a lot of sense, right? And it works really well with the way that his champion plays. And I mean, there's always a chance that you uh, make a slight misplay or that it just is a good idea to die um, in order to gain big advantages. Especially with Lucian joining now. Um, everything is a little bit more dicey because one thing that Renning can struggle with is connecting with an AD carry that has a, something like a Nami support on them. Alright, Yumi on Rennington. Gotta be very careful here. He jumps onto... Yeah, he jumps onto the Lucian. Lucian will flash away. Echo stun doesn't quite land. And this is Faker going down. The beautiful scoreline is destroyed. And that is... Yeah, Lucian picking up a shutdown as well. Which uh, is absolutely huge for Lucian. It's going to net him a real good sum of money. It is going to be exactly a thousand gold. So that is pretty ridiculous for him. And yeah, Faker. I think Faker just pulled the... Uh, Faker pulled the trigger there in a point where his team wasn't ready. I think that was more of the thing. You saw the Echo W wasn't quite on point, you know. And it's just people weren't expecting to be diving in that exact situation. And obviously, this is uh, this is Nami, you know? Nami Nami does a really good job at uh, dealing with threats that jump onto Lucian. Pair that with the fact that Lucian obviously has Gale Force, his E, and Flash. Which uh, wasn't available in this fight, but generally, right? It's going to be very hard for this Reddington to be able to deal with the 
Lucian. Everyone else should be pretty easy, but, you know, we also have Ren Rengar and Echo who have pretty decent access to the backline. Anyhow, it's not gonna be, you know, not gonna be an Akali or anything like this, but should be manageable as well. Flash out of Zed. Uh, Prowler's Claw connects with Zed and Zed will be taken down. So that is one kill as Yumi realizes. All right, Rennington is going to be staying in the bot side of the map. I think the ultimate was not very good here. The ultimate wasn't needed at all as Zed doesn't really have the damage to take down this Rennington. 70 4 CS lead, well 71 CS lead actually, to be precise. So that is a pretty ridiculous CS lead. Also though, conversely, now Lucian has not only the Gale Force, he also has Infinity Edge and a Rapid Fire Cannon, moving up to what I would assume to be, what I would assume to be a collector here, which I find curious. I don't know why we are running lethality items here. I think something like a bloodthirster would have been pretty decent uh, given the fact how... Yeah. I don't know. I think, I think that could have been a better item than a collector. It matters not as the collector is picked up here by Lucian. Solution now, Gale Force, Infinity Edge, Collector and Rapid Fire Cannon, he is fully decked out on crit and obviously he is going to have to go for a Last Whisper item as well, which uh, is probably going to be a Cyrilda's Grudge, because he has enough crit chance anyway. Ooh, yeah, this is, yeah, you just, this is what I mean, right? You can't do anything against the Lucian because he just... He walks up to you and then he just dashes away from you, you know, baiting you in and then he is, he, he could dash again and like, it's just, it's just very difficult, right? Especially with how low HP Faker is, as obviously his entire build is a very, very squishy build here, so this is going to be very interesting. A beautiful pickup by the Nidalee here. Yumi will be able to get out. Echo, yeah, flashes onto the Nami. Does really good damage to a loads of people, but not enough, unfortunately. Rengar has the ultimate available and is going to hunt down and find the Lucian. So that is a really, really good find. And Lucian being the only one who kind of stabilized this team, this could be a Baron call here. Yeah, let's see if that is going to happen. Seems like it will. Preemptive. Preemptive uh, ultimate again. But this is a double kill. Picked up once again. The GA is also available now. And yeah, I was about to say, okay, you need to help with this Baron. Alright, he is on the job. As we are going to be taking down the Baron, which is very, very good for this team. Definitely what they needed. Every member has received Baron as well, which is really, really good. And, ooh, Faker doesn't quite connect with the Nami. Prowler's Claw, just not quite enough range. It's Rengar's ultimate. Is activated and he is hunting. He had marked the Fiora, which is now still going to be running. Fiora will be taken down here, I suppose. Yeah. Fiora taken down here, but... Who says that this... I mean, this still doesn't have to... This still doesn't have to be over. I believe there is a... Either GA or Bloodthirster coming out for Lucian here. This, this still doesn't have to be over if Lucian is able to resist. Mainly the Echo and the Renning Rengar, but obviously Rennington is going to be showing up there as well to play. But it is much better of an idea for Ren Rennington to deal with the Fiora and the Nidalee and the Zed. 
All right, flash on to the Nidley. Yeah, we'll take down the Nidley. Ultimate activated here, pressuring the Lucian. All right, Zed will be taken down as well. Lucian dives on in onto Faker. All right, Echo W is casted, but not really in a position where it's realistically going to be taken. And that is the Prowler's Claw into the fountain. Beautiful play by Faker as he takes down the entire enemy team on his own with just one Q. No. 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 Faker just didn't. Faker just didn't. Sorry. No. No. No crazy what was that moment out of Faker. But very beautifully played. And this is such, such a strong pick here as Faker sells all the items and just acquires it here. Thank you very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Stay awesome.